This is a Talk Station original podcast. On this week's episode of the Paper Boys podcast, we talked to Phyllis Willis and Katrina Smith of the 1994 West Carteret State Championship team. The former coach and player reflect on their iconic season, the only girls basketball state title in county history. It all starts right now on the Paper Boys podcast. Hello and welcome to the Paper Boys Podcast. I'm JJ Smith. And I'm Zach now. We're reporters with the Carter County Times. We're joined today by long, we'll, we'll say longtime coaches and teachers in the county, Phyllis Willis and Katrina Smith. Thanks for being with us. It's our pleasure. About this time, 30 years ago, you two were basking in the glory of a state title, the 1994 West Carter Girls Basketball Championship. At that time, you were the first girls basketball state champion in the county. 30 years later, you're still the only girls basketball state champion in the county. If somebody would have told you 30 years later, you'd have been the only one, you think you would have believed me? I tell you, it's hard to get to that point. It's hard. Yeah. I was thinking today, you know, we talked to the coaches and say, you know, state title, you've got to have talent, you've got to have good work ethic, and you've got to have luck. It takes all three, right? And luck is a huge part. Yeah. Uh, you make your own luck to a good extent, but it, you got to have it. Without it, you're not going to get there. Can you think of a moment that season, that playoff run, where if the ball would have bounced another way or a quarter or a series or a game or something where you thought if that would have happened, we wouldn't have won a state title? Not that I can recall, but I think we created our own luck with our success through, through the season where we had home court advantage. You know, we were the number one seed. And so by having those, those first couple round games at home, that that's tremendous in creating that home atmosphere and we had a great crowd of of supporters that followed us even when we went to greenville for the regionals uh semis and championships we had a caravan going with us we'll talk about bad luck the bus trip to the state championship game <laughs> yeah. let's talk about the bad luck well tell, tell, tell us how that went down well we started out we went up the night before because we wanted to have a little walk around out on the court there at Carmichael mm-hmm. and so we get there we do the you know the whole hooser thing where we measure the you know the hoop we measure the free throw line we talk about it we do a little walk through had, had that there. movie just come out uh, a couple years before okay yeah. yeah so you did the 15 we did it all uh-huh, the 10 <laughs> and then we go to get on the bus and I'm driving it and we go down the hill right there at Carmichael and get to the stop sign and all of a sudden the bus just cuts off oh. and would not restart and we're just sitting there, and first this uh, campus security person comes up, and um, they ask us what's wrong, and I tell them the bus won't start. Can you help us, you know, call someone? Because back then, we didn't have cell phones. I mean, you didn't have nothing. So he said, sure, and then he left, <laughs> and we're still sitting there. Just hoping then, he comes back. <laughs> just hoping somebody comes back. Then a little while later, someone else came. They actually did send somebody. They, it was a person from the water department in orange county the guy came up and he goes that's what they had (laughs) so he comes up and he's talking to me and he you know i said well can you help us figure out what's wrong with the with the bus and he goes well i actually work for the water department so i don't know what we can do i'm like okay so that security guy was like just anybody you go in the meantime some of our old players who were in the area going to school actually came up and were behind the bus so we got all of the girls out of the bus and taken to the hotel and they all got to go to the hotel because i really wanted them to get some sleep and then i stayed with the bus until you know some help came and then eventually somebody came and they ended up getting the bus started so i asked them to please follow me because there was no guarantee that thing was going to stay started so we followed had them follow me back to the hotel and we're actually staying at uh, one of the hotels near the airport at the time and pull into the airport and it died right there never to be started again never again <laughs> never again it and, did its uh, job it got it, you it got us to the hotel officially so i'm checking the kids are already checked into the rooms and you know the guys there were trying to be really nice and they put me in a room that was a whole different floor away from the kids and i was like no no <laughs> This has got to change. There's no way I'm not going to be on the same floor my kids are. Now, I had good kids, but still. Got to make sure. So we got all that changed, and uh, 
I started making phone calls. I called Mr. Patrick several times. I called um, called Ed Hyatt. He wasn't home. I called my husband. He didn't answer the phone. <laughs> Nobody was. Apparently, there was a concert or something at the school and they were all at that except for my husband he was just asleep on the couch (laughs) so finally get hold of him and then he gets hold of gordy and then they work out a deal where they're gonna have my husband go pick up another bus and bring it to us by now it's like two in the morning so he goes down to beaufort picks up another bus and drives it all the way to raleigh by the time he gets there, it's like 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. By the time he gives everything, gets filled up with gas, he gets there. Activity buses are not fast. Sure. So the girls wake up. We have a shoot around, and we're going to get some breakfast. A friend of mine from Leesville Rose was letting us use her school. So we ended up going, I think, to a Waffle House or something and get breakfast. And my husband pulled in just as we're walking out to look for him. So he's exhausted. But we go to the shoot around. We get some food. And we head over to the school. Um, couldn't lock the bus, so we had to bring all of our belongings inside to the the, the locker room. And then uh, I just told the kids, you know, with all the things that went wrong, we're going to win this game. There ain't no way we're not. <laughs> Clearly, it's some kind of destiny here at play. And it's so fun, too, because I'm sure, you know, they're asleep. They're, it's unbeknownst to them what you're going through. It's a lot like being a parent when you're a coach like that. You're just well, trying to keep them in the, keep them, you know, you stay safe, stay fresh. and You have a lot of daughters. Yeah. And I'm proud of all my girls. So there, I had a, that was a great ball club. It was probably the most unselfish team I have ever seen in my life. Every person had a common goal of working together and doing their part to get us there. Made it fun for you so, to come to work, I bet. Oh, it was fun. It was a great group. It was yeah. a fun group to be with. Very intense. They love some basketball. And um, from top to bottom, I think you were only a sophomore that year. Yeah. So, I mean, we just had a good ball club. And I think the newspaper report from that time said it was like 1 o'clock, before, even before the team was got to bed that night, huh? Yeah. it was. Yeah, I, I recall it being late, but we were all ready just to crash. Yeah. I mean, there she didn't have to worry. We were all just tired. And, and to go back to that idea of going to Carmichael and checking it out, like I had never seen Hoosiers before. before. So that whole kind of idea of walking through, I had – the chance to go I went to a summer camp Sylvia Hatchell's camp a couple summers prior so I had practiced there in the adjacent gym so I was familiar with it but the whole rationale of going in there and get the mindset uh, that I had no clue of that stuff I was like let's just go play yeah Yeah, so what was your background in basketball uh Phyllis I had played high school ball um in college I actually played softball but basketball was always one of my loves, and I actually officiated high school basketball while uh-huh. I was in school okay. and ended up with a master's degree um, and started coaching some while I was in school and then um, had a professor named Dr. Jimmy Grimsley, one of the best professors ever. Uh, when I graduated from grad school, he had me a interview in several different places, wow. and Wes Carter was one of them, and they offered me the job on the spot. and. That's how I got there. Oh, so you were fresh out of college? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Where'd you Very go to school? Much so. ECU. Okay. I'm a pirate, baby. <laughs> are, you, and you are, are you a Pamlico Hurricane? I am. Okay. Did you play, and you play basketball at Pamlico? I did. Yeah. Wow. Yes. There's some good, good, good tradition of basketball at, at it Pamlico. It was. It was. We, yeah. had, we had some good ball clubs back then. And I think Zach and I would both attest that our history of following state championship teams is it's usually this group that comes together. And it's, a, it's a great talent cycle. And then they've been together since they were like five years old. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. Is that how it was with you all? Was you all been playing together forever? Not necessarily, because okay. for West at that time, Croatan hadn't started up. So we had girls from, mm. you know, Stella, Cape Carteret, oh. um, Broad, Creek. Broad Creek area. So Moorhead. we played against each other, Broad Creek. Broad Creek was open, um, so so we played against them in middle school. Um and and there really wasn't that much available for girls recreationally. Like I, when I grew up, it was through sixth grade. I played with the boys in the Moorhead Rec League, and I was the only girl playing. And and that was similar for for the other girls. And then we just got together at the high school level wow. and just melded together personalities, Miss Willis, um, and and really succeeded well. Wow, that's a different and, dynamic than yeah. a lot of state title teams. Yeah, and, and you're a first year coach. Not then. I, okay. I had been here about probably seven or eight years oh, by okay. then. Yeah. Okay. 
and we had had good teams all along. We were very fortunate. Yeah. Um, we had started going to basketball camp. I'd take the whole team to camp every summer, and we'd end up going up to Appalachian State. They had a great fundamentals camp back there. They did. And um, we would go, and they just drill the fundamentals, you know, Pistol Pete Maravich drills, all those great mm-hmm. drills. And those were things that our kids really bought into and worked hard at. So every summer – We'd go to summer camp. Katrina, you came with us when you were still in, what, eighth grade? Yeah, I, I started, yeah, I went going into my eighth grade year. So I got to know the girls, the upperclassmen, playing with them early. Yeah, because you mentioned you were a sophomore when the state title was won. So yeah. it's important to get that young and old to. Well, and Katrina was a special player. Saw that right off the bat. So she'd come out and play some pickup with us. So, of course, we invited why don't her you to come, come Why don't you come with us? <laughs> we know where you're going. <laughs> so, but just a good group of girls, and they all just, they worked together. when They all came from different schools and just melded together. But going to camp and, you know, you play 12, 14 games at a time at camp during a week, that's a season of basketball. Absolutely. So that's huge for anyone who's growing in the game. Going to camp and, and just playing so many games is, is everything to your development. Was that the birth of that state championship team, you think, those summer camps? Oh, Most God, yes. Definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. And, and like Coach Wills just said, it, it was a different kind of camp. It wasn't a team camp where all you did was play games. Mm. It was what – what the coaches at App did is we went to their individual basketball camp. Mm-hmm. So they would break up into groups and we'd work on our boxing out and so and all that kind of stuff. And then when it was time to play five on five, they let us West Carteret girls play together. So that I mean, they really did help us. Yeah, you're developing it, chemistry on the yeah, court, it was. and yeah. Because to me, and we never went to a team camp. No. But to me, a team camp is you might as well just go to open gym, mm. right? You, you might be oh, playing. Right. You might be playing different different teams and in, in, in different makeup, but to yeah, to work on your fundamentals and then be able to play together, that was really key. Yeah, the team camps you don't really work on the skills and the fundamentals. Whereas the individual camps, that's their main focus. And that is what we're missing right now in basketball to a good degree, Mm. is the kids going and learning the fundamentals and drilling the fundamentals. Well, I'll bring up a a bittersweet memory of that state championship is uh, an assistant that helped you win at Penny Boudreaux, who just left us, what, last year? Yeah. 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 Tell us about Penny and her contribution to that state championship run. Penny was huge for us. The first time I met her, she was teaching and coaching at Broad Creek, and she was teaching and coaching those kids that were coming up to me each year. It's huge. And, I mean, the continuity there was great, and then she came up and became one of our assistants. Nice. And just all that she contributed was hugely important, not just in her basketball knowledge and skill, because she was a highly competitive person. You played one on one with her, she's gonna throw an elbow in a heartbeat. <laughs> but um just everything that she did, everything she brought to the game, and then also that down east personality was so special because she was so funny, she had everybody laugh. It didn't matter how intense the moment was, she could make everybody laugh in a heartbeat. So Penny was wonderful. We miss her terribly. Mm. And, and you were pregnant that, uh, the year y'all won the state title, right? <laughs> yeah. She was scared to death you were gonna have the baby and she was gonna have the coach, right? Uh, yes. Was it lined right up with the end it of the season? It was actually the uh, – I actually was pregnant the year after we won the state title. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But she was scared to death. Oh, yeah. Uh, so was my husband. <laughs> he had gotten to where he was following the bus on the way to all the ball games, which I'm not sure what he was thinking because if something happened, somebody had to still drive that bus home. <laughs> sure. He wasn't worried about that. He was worried about getting <laughs> yeah. you to where you needed so, to. Yeah, I actually uh, started labor at the Hoggart game. And wow. on the way home, all the girls were sitting in almost in the front seat together, the whole team. <laughs> yeah. And, and the uh, stories about Penny in middle school was uh, arms and legs hanging out of windows, oh taking kids. That's what I recall everybody yeah. saying. Yeah. Just bringing kids back and forth to different oh, practices. Yeah. And she had a, a, like a little hatchback or yep, something, right? Yep, yeah. 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 Those were some yeah memories that were shared last year, but just just great personality, big heart, would do yeah. anything mm-hmm. for you. And like Miss Willis said, like just that Downey's personality of of just knowing when to throw a good little joke in there that ease the mm-hmm. ease the situation. Um, it was yeah, she was special. And a lot of state titles are birthed the year before. What happened the year before that got you all that? fire in your belly or the dedication to win it the next year y'all got to the regionals the year before we right? did we got to the regional were we in the finals that year 
I can't recall if it was finals. It felt like the finals because yeah. the team that we lost to, High Point Central, they were stacked. They yeah, had two they, girls that went ACC. And, um, they, and they went on to win the state final by 40. And wow. we, we lost by like 10 or We 12. lost by 10. We, we, oh, we were wow. the closest margin the whole year. Okay. So, but uh, that was the start of it. We, yeah. we had Debbie and Allison and Julie, all those seniors – that were were there they started it for us um yeah i think we were like 25 and 3 that year i love stories of programs that take those like those steps like mm-hmm. you know from you know third round to regional finals to state championship because that experience playing at those higher levels it does mean something it's it's different you know it's more intense and it was. the opponent on the other side is usually better than what you've seen <laughs> and and for us at that time we traveled to J.H. Rose. So that's where mm-hmm. the, the, the girls' championship was gotcha. there. The regionals. boys were at, or excuse me, regionals, yeah, yeah, were at Minji's. And so being there the season before, and, and Rose is a big gym compared to what we played in and, and, and what West has. So that gave a little bit of comfort, and you knew what size fans it were going to be there, mm. um, how, how large it was going to be. How many girls do you have coming back from that team, that regional team? Um, four. all but about, yeah. I mean. I think we lost four or five seniors. Yeah. So we had the rest coming back. But all of those were starters. All of them were starters except Katrina and Jennifer, right? You and you and Jennifer were starters that came back. So th- we had three starters I think we lost. Okay. Yeah. So That's pretty significant. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, when you think about coming back and going a step further, um, that obviously, that speaks to the the – the status of the program at that point, right? Like where yeah. you come in and expectations are understood and standards are set very high. And and we had a really dominant group. I think it was maybe like for seven years, mm-hmm. we had seven girls go D1. Jeez. So like we, we, we did well, we did well. And, and Miss Willis did well at preparing us um, and being those that wanted to go to the next level and play in college. I mean, for me, the difference was they weren't two hour practices. They were three and a half or four hour practices, but the intensity, um, what you did, Mm. that was all the same. It was just, you know, college level. So you you got to stay in the gym longer. Yeah. And of course, colleges love to get kids from programs like that where they already come in every year. I'd take the girls up to see a game. Uh, we went up to see um, NC State and Virginia play. Remember oh, yeah. that game? That was that um, double overtime. Yeah, they were ranked one and two wow. in the nation at the time in yeah, women's basketball. Yeah. And it went into double overtime, and it was just unreal. Um, Dawn Staley, who's at Tammy USC, Reese, she was the their point guard sister. then. Right. Wow. So, like, yeah, yeah, went up got to watch all those girls, and, yeah. and we would do that every year. And that also was part of that catalyst that teaches them what's next. Mm, well, you got to look, you know, strive for something, right? I mean, a lot of those girls you said going on to play college ball, even if it wasn't D1, I'm sure you had more just go play. Uh, we even went up and saw the national team practice, remember? The Olympic team, they came to Raleigh and played against NC State for a, um, an exhibition. Nice. And we got to see them, got to see Lisa Leslie go up and dunk a ball. Wow. Oh, it's pretty cool. I mean, back then, that you know, weren't many people who could dunk at all for women, but Lisa Leslie still could. Mm. So it was it was a lot of fun. You went to UNC Greensboro. I did. Jennifer Lewis went to UNC Greensboro. She did. She was two years ahead of me. So when we won in 94, she was a senior. I was a sophomore. So I got to play two years with her in high school and then got to play two years with her in college. And we won our conference tournament championship and made it to the NCA together as well. Wow. Same Went same time show. period. She was a senior, I was a sophomore. Wow. wow. Yeah. Were y'all did you all go to the same middle school? We did not. She was okay. at Newport. I was okay. a Moorhead. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to think, rack my brain of how many times in this county, boys or girls, since West Carter East Carter started, had two division one players on the same basketball team. Man, that's a rarity. Yeah. You too. We were fortunate. Uh, well, and in, in, in the year before, so my freshman year, Jen's junior year, Debbie went to Campbell. Debbie, Debbie Knight, Knight went to Campbell. Okay. So she started it for basketball. Wow. She was the wow. first. She was our first D1 that went from our, and our then, program. And then Jen and then myself and Carrie and you had um, Heather and, and – Yeah, and then um, Patrice yeah. and uh, – Patrice Butler, um, Jessica Bryant, yep. they all went D2. Yep. 
Uh, we had a, a good number there. Shamra Henderson, she went to an HBC. So, I mean, we had a bunch who went at different Well, levels. it's great, too, because you can... Akilah went to Queens, Akilah went to Queens, Akilah, Queens yeah. College, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, can, you can keep track of each other's careers and, and how you're doing, and it extends beyond high school, and that's so fun to know you were all part of that program. And yeah. I was trying to think today, the, the, the year the West Boys won... Uh, Mark Mansfield went to UNC Greensboro, mm-hmm. and Sammy yeah. Gibson went to App State. And then East Carter in the 90s had Dwight Jones, who went to Colorado, mm-hmm. and Timmy Reels, who went to Lamar. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's the list. Not, not in my 10 years. Has I not think been that's it. Anything close. I don't think we've ever had the, that kind of concentrated talent at one time. Yeah. So you ought to have that four- or five-year run where you were sending people every year. Yeah. That's phenomenal. We were very fortunate. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. A lot of kids who worked hard, who had athletic ability, but also had the fundamentals to take you to that next level. And and that's key because a lot of kids may have some ability or they may have fundamentals. To put them both together is those are the kids that actually make it to the next level. That's right. That's right. What was uh, scouting like back then? Because there was no uh, <laughs> NFHS feeds that we're getting now that you can watch online and whatever. How y'all you couldn't just well, make a huddle profile? Yeah, no yeah. huddle pro, no max preps. All those years of going to App State. Um, there you go. Got to be friends with a whole lot of wonderful women's basketball coaches, and that friendship <laughs> networking helped to bring <laughs> one or two videos our way absolutely of western, of con- you know, western, western schools state, yeah. maybe yeah. even the exact team we played in the state <laughs> final their regional final game got to me <laughs> nice. so we had them scouted pretty well which was good wow tell us about smoky mountain what do you remember of them oh they were big they had a girl Tall. that was she was a she was big time player six two six three, six two, six three wow. wide body Good athletic ability, good shooter, very physical. Mm. We had to run several different people on her throughout the game to try to shut her down. Um, And uh, some of those kids, their only job was defense in that game. Just concentrate on her. And and She's going to score points, but still, your effort will go a long way. (laughs) Yeah, well, we had to try to shut her down, and we did. Yeah, We shut her down pretty much. I think she had 10 points for the game. Okay. So, which was really good. And um, we were fortunate enough, we had a bunch of athletes. Jennifer Lewis was a little bit hurt that game. Going back to the regional finals in Greenville, we were playing against Southwest Edgecombe. Tight game. They had a great ball club. I think they won the state championship the following year. Game was back and forth the whole game. Couldn't be any tighter. They had they had several D1 athletes on that team. And uh, I guess we were in the third quarter, and Jennifer made a cut and freak accident happened kid that she was cutting on her shoe caught that kid's shoe the lip on the inside of the shoe caught her big toenail and ripped the toenail about three quarters of the way off and i mean she comes to the sideline i get the shoe off the game's still going on shoe's bloody toenail's still there She's our leading scorer. <laughs> Someone get some wrap. Let's go wrap it up and, real you quick. Know, she's sitting there, and I'm just letting her sit there for a while. We're coaching. We end up going down by a couple. Uh, I look at her and say, Jen, you don't go back in. This game's over. She goes, give me my darn shoe. I'm not sure she used that word. <laughs> Put her shoe back on with the toenail just like that. Went and played the gutsiest game I've ever seen. Wow. And ended up being the high score for the game. Just played a great game, and everybody around her played a great game. And then in the state championship game, she had had to have that toenail cut off that Monday. Wow. So after the game, and then so her foot was very tender. And so cutting, moving, it was a lot. It was tender. It was hard to do. She, she toughed it out, but it was hard to do. Sure. But what was special about that group is whatever kid went down or had an injury, someone else picked it up. So in that game, I think it was Akila picked up the slack a whole bunch, had the game of her life, best game she ever had. What a moment to do it. Yeah, and, and it was huge. And then um, the ball handling <laughs> ball handling was important that game because they, they played some pretty hard defense. And Katrina just took over out there. Um, Shamra got you. Oh, no. I got, I yes, roll, got rolls her eyes. Trouble. Don't <laughs> give me well, that. Her, <laughs> yeah, and her and Shamra, because they're both such good players, Shamra Henderson, both got in foul trouble during that game, mm-hmm. and both of them were starters. And so it, it's the next man up all the time. 
And I mean, Charlotte Gardner came out, played the game of her life. Katrina, you know, you were out some, but trying to get her back in constantly because we need that ball handling. And that meant that Jennifer was going to have to handle the ball more with her toe hurt. Mm. So, and then we had several kids, Felicia Sessoms, uh, Tasha Sutton. Each of them stepped up and played the game of their lives, of their whole career. And they were seniors. Not big scorers, but in that moment, they came through and made a few baskets and just played the defensive games of their lives. Wow. Well, that regional final game you mentioned, uh, Jennifer uh, had her toenail broken off. She scores 23 points. She's the regional MVP. 59-58 thriller, the News Times called it, over Southwest it was. Edgecombe. That one went down to the wire, huh? Yes, yeah. it did. Yeah, I mean, it was a tight game all the way through. Um, could have gone either way. That was one of those games that anything could have changed it. The whole incident with the toenail for Jennifer – that was a turning point, and that could have gone either way. Mm. And just the, the way the kids pulled together and the way they played, um, that was another one of those games where Charlotte Gardner really came through big and got a couple of big layups on some back doors. Because, again, we would pull out in four corners if we got a lead, which we did, <laughs> And then because we, we're going to pull the other team out. Now, what's this four corners you're talking about? Um, Katrina, you had a memory of this? <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, Coach Willis stumping on the floor and spreading her arms out really wide. And Doing her best Dean Smith it. impression. It's spread. the old Dean Smith. <laughs> That's, That's right. It. Everybody gets wide out to the corners. I got the ball up at the top. We kick it to the wing, and I come back up, and it's just V cuts and coming back and getting the ball. And you do that five or six times and sell it to the defense and then – easy little back door yeah eventually somebody's gonna blow their coverage and we're gonna take the back door cut and it would always be an easy layup plus precious seconds getting off the clock lots of time because we were really good at not getting fouled and then if we did get fouled it was either jennifer or uh, katrina and they could go in and knock down a free throw in a heartbeat now you being the coach you were with those girls in that group you didn't call them always uh katrina and jennifer did you now uh Um, Katrina's nickname was Half Pint. Okay. Because and she came to us. She was, you know, in the eighth grade going <laughs> sure, to camp with sure. us. Rising eighth Always grader. the little one. So she was, she was a half pint back yeah, then compared yeah. to all the high school kids. But she held her own. We'd play pickup games during the summer, and she'd be out there holding her own. So, and then uh, Charlotte Gardner, she had a nickname of Cheese because she was smiling all the time. Okay. It didn't matter <laughs> what was going on, she was smiling. Yeah. And she was one of those who really came in big for us. Just made some baskets that were timely were perfect and just hadn't been done before so it was kind of perfect the way that everything played out so who else had some nicknames there shammer was sham, sham. sham. um yeah i think that so i think that sometimes might a couple nicknames. people uh yeah. you just have to you gotta you gotta give them something if yeah. they don't have a, a great last name or something like that and uh i like cheese that's a great yeah. nickname katrina has 10 points Six assists, three rebounds, and three steals in the regional final. Keila Johnson goes for 15 points and eight rebounds. And the game before, which also sounds like a close game, 47-40 over Ashboro. Mm-hmm. Jennifer had 17 points. Shamara Henderson had 16. Was that a tight one right down? You had to go to four Shamra. corners in that one? Yeah, Shamra. Oh, Shamra. yeah. We went, to, we went to four corners yeah. anytime we had a lead at the, at the end of the game because it's an easy way to knock some time off the clock go to our strength, which is ball handling and free throw shooting, and really just stress the defense. Yeah, keep the ball so, safe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I had complete trust, especially with um, Jennifer and with Katrina handling the ball. In the third round game over Bettingfield, 56-49, Shamra goes for 21 points and 17 rebounds. Oh, yeah. She had a nice playoff run, huh? And in that game, um, Jennifer Lewis – We played – she played against who would eventually be her college roommate yep. and teammate at UNCG. Yeah. Wow. We played Reb Viverette, yeah. So they went to UNCG together, and then I jumped in and got to be teammates with them. Nice. Yeah. So it wasn't just some Division One talent, sort of that stretch for West Carter. You were playing teams with oh, Division yeah. One yeah. talent. Oh, yeah. We played some really good teams that year. Uh, in the conference, we played North Lenore with Anna Spears coaching back then. And, um, wow. Yeah. yeah, and Anna, uh, she had some great teams. And we went back and forth. Um, I think we won all the games that year, but they were all tight games. Yeah. Them and us were ranked one and two in the state wow. for a huge part of the season. So and we were in the same conference going against each other. So we had some great competition the whole way through, which really helps you to get into it. 
and and when you're going into the playoffs, there's a mindset that you have to have. You can't say I got to win four games to get to a state championship. You got to look at everything in a series. In um, the sectionals, you first look at okay, the sectionals is a three game set. You just got to win three games. New season, whatever's happened before, don't matter. And the first game, if you're number one, you get a bye. So we only got to win two games. Then, you know, that's clear. Then you go into regionals. Now, you only got to win two games. Nothing else matters. You got to focus one game at a time, but it's a two game set. Well, we had played tournaments so that we had learned how to handle two game sets. Mm. And then, you know, once you win that, brand new season again. Each time it's a new season, and you have to look at it that way. You can't rest on what you've done. You've got to constantly be looking or worry what's about next. mistakes that got made in the last right. game. Yeah, Short mistakes memories. are going to happen. Let it go. Uh, Y'all got a first round buy, and even the second round, you only won by eleven over West Craven. That sounds like that was pretty competitive. Yes, uh, Jennifer had sixteen points, ten rebounds. Keila Johnson goes for fourteen points, three rebounds. Katrina Smith with thirteen points and six boards. It uh, sounds like the run you made through the playoffs was – there was no gimmies, it doesn't sound like. There were no gimmies. Once you get to the playoffs, especially after the first round, everybody there deserves to be there. Um, everybody's got good ball players. Everybody's got good coaching. At that point, it's you make your own luck by hustling and by working hard. But you also – you have to ride that luck, and you got to believe you can do it. And our kids just always believe that they could do it. If somebody gave a scouting report on the West Carter team that year, what would be the what was the makeup of the team? What did you have to be prepare, prepare for? Um, every given night, someone else was going to contribute. You know, you 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 knew Jen was going to produce. Um, she's a D one player. She's she's going to be there. But like Miss Willis said, we had Felicia, we had Tasha, we had Sham. I Had mean, we, I mean, Lee would come off the bench. Lee Jones would yes, come off did. the bench as a sophomore with me. Um, and just everybody, it, it was so good to know everybody. You you hear, and I, I listen to, and I'm sorry, I'm stuttering a little bit, like Gino talks online and, and you have these interviews with him and, and you're talking about role players. And, and role players have this negative connotation, but – if everybody does what they need to do per game, you know, you might be a role player in rebounding one game, but the next you're locking down defense on someone. And I think we had that mindset. And I think from being getting to where we got the year before, we knew we were capable, and so we knew what we wanted. We It, it wasn't something new. Hey, let's try to get to the state championship. Like, that was day one my sophomore year we're we're going to the state championships wow. um and so i think everybody just bought into it all season long and that's a long season i mean we were 28 and 2 that's yeah. a, that's a lot of games to play mm. it's a lot of um, games and i can remember the two losses um we, we played in a christmas tournament in down at east duplin and lost to someone and we lost to hogger and that was it do those losses stick out as much they do. They, they so, stick out ev- more than, than <laughs> so every athlete i ask game. that's yeah. the answer they yeah. remember those yes. more than the wins what does yeah. that say i don't know now if i remember right east duplin won the state championship that year too or they were close yeah. yeah they were they were either won it or runner up yeah. so i mean the two times we lost right you're losing to top teams, <laughs> top teams. right 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 yeah well, it's funny you mentioned about everybody can contribute because you got Shamara that went, like I said, 21 and 17 versus Bettingfield. Then Jennifer scores 23. She's the regional MVP in the final. And then the state final, Akila is the MVP. She had 18 points. Mm-hmm. So any and given she night. She had a bunch of rebounds, too. Yeah. Yeah. She's 5'8, and she's our center. I mean, we have taller centers. <laughs> Sounds like a Carter County team. East Carter, yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. Defensively, we had Felicia and Tasha on their big girl. Offensively, we're feeding. Akila like a baby duck inside because wow. she can jump out of the gym. And her speed so, around the defender. Oh, she's fast. You know, she quick one-step move, and she was right around him. Yeah, and she could go up, and she got free. It was going in. So. Wow. And, I mean, we had no trouble feeding people like baby ducks if they were hot. <laughs> Whoever was hot got the ball. Heat checks. That's right. Yeah, that's Who's it. got it tonight? And, and that's how that team was. They were very unselfish. Everybody had a role, and everybody was okay with their role which that's what made that team so special Mm. because most teams you always have some people who are unhappy it's half the battle sometimes Um, one of my favorite pictures ever was of the state championship team 
I think Akila might have been on the free throw line, either Akila or Jennifer. And it's we're down there and we're behind right then. And this is where we took the lead for the first time. And the picture is of the bench and everybody's arm in arm, standing, holding hands, arm in arm, and just looking. And when she makes the free throw, the picture is the whole team arm in arm jumping together off the bench. That's teamwork. And that's such a huge part of basketball is the teamwork aspect. And just and kids have to buy into that. Drama free that team was. Very much so. Yeah. And Katrina, yeah. And, and and having coached other teams and you having yeah. coached teams, like you all can attest that doesn't always happen. Yeah, most certainly. <laughs> I mean, I, we were single mindedly like we're gonna win. We, uh, that was that was the mindset. When we lost out in the regionals to High Point Central, I think everybody's goal was to win state championship the following year. I think it was embedded us then when we went to summer camp that year. That was the goal then. We would always sit down and and set our goals each year, and then we would cross them off. And that was our our final goal. We set it the first day of practice. This is what we want to do. We want to win the conference. We want to win the conference tournament. We want to win the sectional tournament. We want to win the regional tournament. We want to win the state championship. Mm. And then you just start going after each one of those goals one at a time, staying focused one game at a time. Whatever's next up. So we're playing Smoky Mountain in the state final. It's two minutes and 40 seconds on the clock, and you're down five points. Yes. Had you been down in the in a recent – because when, when you all win the state title, that's your 20th straight win. Yes. So during that 20 straight wins, had it been down five or two minutes ago, or had you been in control of most of the games? I don't think so. I don't think we've been down. So that was, so a, was totally new territory. territory. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Maybe down a point or two, uh-huh. but not by that much. And um, it, it was it was a lot. I mean, in that game, we only led twice. We hit a bucket to lead at halftime, and then at some point, with it was less than a minute on the clock when we finally uh, took the lead. Um, Keila Johnson. I'm not sure if Akila took the shot, but she got the rebound, put it back up, scored, and then got the free throw that put us up by one. Mm. So we had a three-point play that put us up by one. It should be so easy to panic when you're not used to that in the regular season or in the rest of the playoffs. To... Yeah, was there any timeouts there and be like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Chill out. We're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, uh, not really. That group was so Pretty steady. Poised. Yeah. I mean, they, they were focused. They knew what they could do. They trusted in each other, and that was the biggest thing. They had a lot of trust in each other, and they would just go out and play. When you I think mean, back to that game, Katrina, what, what sticks out the most for you? Oh, man. Um, playing in Carmichael was probably one I'm thing, right? Carm- it's amazing, the, the noise level in that mm. small place. The um, reverb and all of it, it yeah. It is. Um, it's special there. I think just like Miss Will said was our poise that I mean to be in that setting and to be down where we were it didn't rattle us we we were in the game the entire time we I you know some calls different ways some mm-hmm. fouls different ways but at the end of the game we we were able to stick together and, and execute I'm curious is there a moment during the game is it that like the most memorable part is at the end when when the buzzer goes off and you've won or is there something in the middle of the game that you really like you can still see right. in your head you know I really wish I could and I there was two instances one was I got in foul trouble and at some point in the fourth quarter I was sitting and Jennifer was dribbling the ball up on the left wing and as she was bringing the ball up by the bench she yelled at it get her back in the game <laughs> I remember that um honestly don't remember the four fouls I did I I apologize for for doing that, teammates. Um, and then Katrina never fouled anybody. And then so she's sitting there mortified, of course. And then I, that I remember. I remember Akilah's play. Um, and then truly, I remember when the buzzer sound and family and friends came out of the stands, and we just all started jumping up and down, mm. like we just got in a big mob. And, and, and started celebrating. That's, you know, as many games as you play throughout your life and your career and you watch and you coach, I really don't have a lot of vivid memories of certain spots in that game. Um, I wish I did. But. For me, it wouldn't be one spot, but defensively, we had, on their big girl, we had Felicia Sessoms taking turns with Tasha Sutton. And the two of them gave everything they had. They bodied up. They moved. They did everything that had to be done. And they were exhausted. And I remember 
at the end of the game, right there, just as the buzzer was going off, Tasha just laid down on the floor. She was exhausted. She had played her heart out. She had done everything that was asked of her and held that kid. I mean, that kid only had 10 points the whole game. And that was that was huge because mm. she was she was a big girl and she was lighting it up the whole season, and um and that was just special seeing a kid who was a role player give everything she had to the team, and then of course the free throw or or the the shot that Akila rebounded and went straight back up. I mean so quick that the defense couldn't go up with her. Made it. They fouled her. And then the free throw, just knew she was going to make the free throw. And once that free throw was hit, I had no doubt in my mind we were going to win. Wow. And like I said, that's their 20th win. The momentum's building with every win. You, you guys mentioned earlier about the kind of support you were getting from the town. What was that like when they were traveling with you to Greenville, to Chapel Hill? You said you had a parade. What what kind of support was the community giving you? Um, we had a great group of parents, for one. Um, Katrina's parents, Debbie Knight's parents, Jennifer Lewis's parents, um, the Butlers, um, just so many parents that were there, um, Charlotte's parents, uh, and so many Everybody. more. Yeah. And they Everybody's. were there for every game. And, and, and even the parents from teams of past, like uh, Debbie Knight's parents were there. They all, everybody came back for them, even though their kids were gone. Rodney Kemp was there. Um, all of them came back and were still a part of it. And uh, we had a following, you know, that was pretty cool. And when we actually won the state championship, we had resource officer. I think it was Mr. W officer Willis. I can't remember. But um, he had told me to let him know if we won. So I did. I made a phone call to him and said, we won. And then um, kind of had an idea something was going to happen. <laughs> so then on the way back, uh, we had stopped to eat, got something to eat. We're on the way back. All the girls are asleep on the bus by then. And we're coming just out of hot, out oh of uh, Havelock. And I saw them all coming up. And there's like four cop cars. Oh, Sheriff's everybody wake Department up. and New Repeat. <laughs> oh, that wasn't, you couldn't miss it. They all hit their lights at the same time. And all the girls woke up. And I don't know who it was. I think it was Jennifer yelled, Coach Wills is getting pulled over again. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get you now. Yeah. That so, was the first time they seen cop car lights when you were driving the there bus. There might have been one other time. <laughs> they were waiting for you at the county line. Yeah. But they were. They were waiting for us at the county line, That's and they awesome. took us all the way into the school. That's awesome. And then we had a huge group there at the school that night, yep. which was pretty cool. And it was great for the girls to get to experience all that because um, they had worked hard. I mean, you know, we talked not long ago about how we always had uniforms and stuff. Mm -hmm. We sold candy bars every year because we were going to have nice uniforms. We weren't waiting. For the rotation for, yeah. of, you know. Right, right, the so, boosters and all yeah. that. Yeah. We had three sets of uniforms. We had a white set, a red set, and a blue set. Oh. We had shooting shirts, and we were going to look good no matter what. <laughs> so, and But all those parents bought into that because – I mean, obviously, the parents had to do a whole lot of candy bar selling. So, uh, it was a good group doing that. It was. 52 so. and 5 during the two-year run. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Not bad. Pretty good. Do you remember the three losses the year before? Do you remember who they were to? Um, Better rack your brain yep. for this one. We Christmas lost to... Christmas tournament in Raleigh. Yeah, was it Lee <laughs> Oh, wow. Raleigh no, it was Christmas Cary. tournament. Yeah. We went to Cary Christmas yeah. tournament. Wow. We lost to Cary, matter of fact, wasn't it? It may I have think, been – oh, no, because that no. was Karen – I remember that was Karen Curtis. I didn't play okay. against Karen Curtis. She was a good point guard. She was a senior my freshman We year. lost the game in that tournament, and the team that won that tournament went on to win the state championship. Okay. The team we lost to won the state championship mm. that year. Yeah. High Point so, Central. High Point Central. And then we were uh -huh. going to be undefeated, and we went to Conley and lost a conference game in Conley. Okay. Those were our three. And I think that was our only that conference pre playoff loss. wake up call right there. Like. Yeah. That was the year before. We had three. Yes, yeah. that was the year before. Y'all yeah. yeah. won back to back yeah. conference and back to back conference league titles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, tournament titles, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. It's so funny to me. You talk about that reception when you get home on I guess it's Saturday night, probably. It was like yeah. early morning. And then, yeah. And then Monday morning, you go to class and you're just a regular <laughs> student again. Yeah. Nothing has happened. I well, mean, I'm sure there was like a pep quite. rally or something, but. Because that night, was it that night that all of y'all came over to my house? We had oh, a little tradition goodness. that we did every year when we won the conference. We would stop and um, 
and we'd eat somewhere and and then we'd go to the bathrooms and we'd pile up the <laughs> toilet paper and our parents would do a good job of parents of, would help <laughs> of, of keeping miss willis either in her house or take her out to dinner somewhere after and so we got really good at we would toilet paper our house every year for, for victories that we would do did you up the ante for the state I oh yeah yeah the, <laughs> I think we upped the it ante was impressive so, even yeah. you had to be like you know what this is it great it was impressive yeah. uh, they all came back for milk and cookies to help take it down i was gonna say that's you're all coming back yeah, to they help all came back. clean it up yeah. but this is great but then i got them back because then on monday when we were back in school um I played a little joke on some of them. I got the resource officer to help me out, and we were going to pretend to arrest them <laughs> for vandalism. <laughs> nice. So we call a bunch of them get called into the office. Of course, they're wow. terrified, and then we're laughing and couldn't stop. And then um, Kelly McDaniel, uh, with her, I actually talked to her mother, and I think it was prom or something. Now all y'all were gone, I went over and I TP'd her bedroom. <laughs> Nice. So just to get back that one little bit left. That's great though, because that's that's that just shows the level of uh, of love and care you had for each other as as teammates and as people as part of a program like that. Was that a senior heavy group that year? Um, Jennifer, Jeez. Charlotte, yes, Akila, yeah. yeah. So next year, and Tasha, and Tasha and Felicia, yeah. yeah five. Next year, that special round kind of came to an end a little bit, or were you had, did you have, have some success? No, no, we were back in it. We were back in it. We were. Um, we were, we we were, we were a 4A size school, and the county wouldn't fund the upgrades for facilities for us to go to so the next level. What they penalized us was we couldn't go. We could go to the state playoffs every other year. I remember reading about so that. So that year we, we couldn't go. We oh. we were not to sound arrogant. We were just as good. I mean, uh, we won. We won the conference we and won the, the conference, conference again. Tournament th- again that year. I think we lost like five games that year. Yeah. And I couldn't was, go to the playoffs. We couldn't go to the playoffs. How about and that? then my senior year, we made it again to the regional Regionals. championship. Wow. For, for those listening and who lost. don't, because I, I don't understand. And how, then how, we how, lost the Southwest Edge. You, had to have, you basically had to have 4A it. facilities to be 4A school, right? Yeah. Is that yeah. what they were saying? Because Croton wasn't built yet. Uh huh. So we, we were population wise a 4a size school and so because you didn't have certain facilities you could not compete in the playoffs that was part of the the penalty penalty that they gave wow if you made the playoffs one year you couldn't go the next year and that was for every sport what so, a so back weird to back state thing. titles was not out of the realm of nope, I don't happen. I don't think so. You think you could have made it? Wow. Oh, I think yeah. we could have. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure the yeah. the conversations in the 30 years since then has been as much about that season as it was probably the state championship season, huh? Oh yeah. So. Well, and really the only way that we got to win 94 because we made the state championship 93 was that was the reclassification um, year and and Washington <clears throat> came into our conference mm-hmm. and so they kind of gave us a clean slate. And then said, "Okay, you can go this year, but you can't go next year." Yeah. And so that it, when Injustice. you ask you ask that question Terrible. about luck at the beginning of the podcast, yeah. that's our luck. That's it. How about know? that? That's our luck. Wow. Thinking about it again because yeah. it all started over when they when they redistricted. So yeah, wow. reclassified. Wow. Back to back, that would have been yeah. something. It would have been. <laughs> and the year after that, yeah. the next couple years after, and then that, you got regional final had, even yeah. the next year. So. Yeah. That would have been a four-year run of regionals, yep. right? And then yeah. Southwest Edgecombe went on to win, and then they won the state championship that year. Wow. And the point guard for them. Tanisha Lewis. Yeah, she was the point she guard. She the state. Yeah, she was the point guard against us um, when we won the state championship. Uh-huh. She took the news clippings from us beating them and put them in her room. Uh-huh. And they were on her she was reading the News yeah. Times for a year. Yes, she was. <laughs> Faithful reader. And when they won the state championship, she, she spoke about that. Wow. That that was her motivation. She had taken those clippings, put it up that. on her wall, and she looked at them every day. Wow. Because that was, that was where she wanted to be and who she wanted to be. She ended up going to state. Yeah. I, I played a good ball player. Played yeah. against her at state. Well, thank you all so much for coming in today reminiscing about a rare thing in this county, a girls' basketball state championship, the one and only. Thank, thank you. Thank you.